Hello and welcome back to Like Maria. Today we're looking at Blake's poem, London, and we're looking at the poetic effects and techniques that he uses in this poem. So today, when you finish the session, you'll know all about Blake's poetry, just like Maria. So first of all, I'm going to talk about the monotony of this poem. And in some ways, this is a very monotonous poem. There is a tight structure, four stanzas, four lines. They have the same amount of syllables in each line. And there is a strict ABAB alternating rhyme scheme. Each line is written approximately in iambic tetrameter. And that is a series of didum, 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 where there is an unstressed syllable followed by a stressed syllable four times in the row. So this de dum de dum meter combined with the alternating rhyme and the repetition of words like chartered, every and um, mark at the start of the poem suggests this um, monotonous and universal um, monotony of life. I'm going to introduce you to a new term for that phrase in every. It's repeated at the initial stage of each line and the term is anaphora. If a phrase is repeated at the beginning of a line of poetry it's called anaphora. So that anaphora just stresses that this is a universal experience, everyone experiences it. Secondly I want to talk about the visual and oral imagery. So there is visual and oral imagery throughout here. We hear Blake talking about the cries, the sounds, the voices of the city and he delivers all this in the present tense. So we are there with him listening and soaking up the atmosphere of this poem. So in each stanza, we get a taste of a different aspect of London, whether it be the blood running down the walls and his imagination about how these soldiers are giving their lives um, for people who don't care about them, um, or the cries of the newborn baby. Thirdly, I want to talk about very specific imagery here. Image of darkness. There is blackening, there is midnight. There is image of plague and illness and disease, blood and blight and plague. And this negative imagery, this imagery of misery that pervades the poem is enhanced by alliteration. We have weakness alliterating with woe. We have blasts alliterating with blight. So it's as if we can't escape from the repetitive, dark, brooding, unpleasant, diseased, ridden atmosphere that is there in London. Next, I want to talk about three key images, the infant's cry of fear, the youthful harlot and the marriage hearse. And this is a key element of Blake's poem. He talks about some things that could possibly lead you to think positively about life. An infant, youthfulness, marriage, they're all good things. But in this poem, they are immediately followed by negativity and oppression and bad things. The cry of the infant is one of fear. That's not what a child should experience. Youthfulness is followed by that harsh noun harlot meaning a prostitute. A young prostitute is a real tragedy in society. Marriage is supposed to be a new start of life and a join, joining of two people together in a flourishing family. But here it's associated with a funeral vehicle, that hearse. So at every turn, it seems to be in this poem, Blake is observing people whose hopes and futures are crushed by oppression and darkness and disease. And this is really what he wants us to take away from this poem. Lastly, I want to talk about perhaps the most famous line in this poem, the mind forged manacles. The romantic poets thought that the imagination was key to liberation. One could escape with imagination from the toil and drudgery of everyday life. And it was the mind connected with the imagination that could achieve this. People in poverty and who are oppressed by the government cannot find 
an imagination and a way of breaking away from this. So they start thinking in a negative way and creating manacles for themselves. Manacles are chains which tie them down. And so these mind forged manacles highlighted there by that alliteration come at the end of that stanza where they are shown to be kind of weighting down people. And Blake is very um, distressed about this. He feels that people cannot escape and they have a lack of the ability, a lack of mental ability to break free from these chains. So there you have some useful things that you can write in your essay about the techniques and effects that Blake is achieving in this poem.